Good day, YouTube. Warbles on a lot here. With what's probably going to be a mad scientist movie, but anyway, you get that. And I want to talk to you about solar panels. Specifically, why it's a really good idea to actually inspect them when you take delivery of them. Because, as those of you who've been paying attention to my channel will no doubt recall, recently I posted a video concerning my attempt to resuscitate these golf cart batteries. And in the course of that video, I mentioned that I was going to go over to my shed and withdraw from my stash therein one of a pair of 70 watt solar panels that I had stashed there. And indeed, in that video, I did show this box, which was the one containing the 70 watt solar panel on the left of the array there. When I bought that panel 12 months ago, I opened the box and I inspected it and I played with it and I tested it and I posted a video of it because I was so pleased with it. And in fact, I was so pleased, I actually bought another one and put it in the shed as well. But as it happened, I didn't actually open and look at the second 70 watt solar panel until I was halfway through making the video about resuscitating the golf cart batteries. And then I received a fairly nasty surprise because instead of a normal looking solar panel, what I got was this uh, photovoltaic jigsaw, which looks in the sunlight like this. In slanted sunlight, it looks like this. And in shade, you can see the fracture pattern. It's not unlike one of those old fashioned windscreens where they heat treated them. So the glass was under stress and it used to break into little small fragments. But these ones are not necessarily blunt edge fragments. And uh, it makes creaking noises when you press on it. So I went and had a talk to the people I bought the solar panel off and they had a talk to the people who supplied it to them. And despite the fact that it was 11 months after I purchased it, they gave me a new panel for half the price of a new one. And uh, that means that basically they're admitting that it may well have been their carrier who dropped this thing and broke it because this is the box that it arrived in and it was stored in and there's no actual impact marks on the box nor were there any impact marks on the box containing the undamaged solar panel that was stored beside it. When my stash of solar panels, three of them to the entirety, were stored on their edges, resting vertically underneath this empty cardboard box for a 30 watt gallium arsenide solar panel, which was up on top and which with the carpet, that actually had the swamp wallaby jumping around on it all night. I'm pretty sure the swamp wallaby didn't try to do a rebound kick off the pile of solar panels, which were in the shed. So in all fairness, yeah, I reckon they did very well by me to accept that the swamp wallaby didn't break the solar panel because there were no swamp wallaby toenail marks in the cardboard box. So yeah, I only had to pay half price for the replacement. And there are actually a couple of clues in how the replacement arrived, which lead me to believe that maybe, maybe it, it was their carrier who broke the solar panel rather than my swamp wallaby, because it goes like this. This is the box the broken panel came in, and it arrived with nearly some bubble wrap around it. And that is the speckled result. This is the box, the panel, which is currently in service on the Tower of Power, arrived in. And if you pay particularly close attention, you'll see that both 
the functional panel and the photovoltaic jigsaw have a net weight of 5.1 kilograms. However, behold, we have the replacement panel in its box and instead of 5.1 kilograms net weight, what we have is 5.8 kilograms net weight. So there's 0.7 of a kilogram or slightly over a pound of extra weight in the newbie. Net weight, not packing, just net weight. I wonder what that might be. Perhaps, possibly, maybe it could be thicker, more durable glass on the front of the solar panel, which is guaranteed for 25 years out there in the hail. What do you reckon? And then Here's another thing, whereas last year's 70 watt solar panels, which were lighter, came nearly with some bubble wrap in the box, like such, oh and by the way, each panel comes with a stick on under the glass serial number, which matches the one on the box, so you can't play games with this shit. Here's the heavy duty panel. And would you look what's inside that? They've got some 20 mil foam styrene packing sheets to prevent any stress or harmonic vibration building up in the glass during transit. So, not only is this year's solar panel heavier and stronger and packed better as well, but it arrives in mint, undamaged condition, unlike last year's model, wherein one out of the two that I purchased showed up like this, and therefore I got it for half price, effectively, because they sent it to me wrong. So now, what do we do with a solar electric jigsaw? Well, I thought testing their voltage output might be a start, so that's the brand new one, undamaged, 21.5. And this is the one with the crinkle cut finish, 20.4. Is that going to show up for me? Yeah, no, maybe. 20.4, okay, so we're down a volt. Okay, so we've got four amps from the new panel. Just better let you see that connection there. Four amps. Then we have two amps from the crinkle cut panel. So it's no longer a 70 watt panel, it's a 30 watt panel. And now I have to do something to waterproof it, at least that is my impression. So I'll put the new one back in its box for safekeeping and we'll take the half power solar panel which came for nothing effectively because it's been replaced at half price by a newbie and I propose to waterproof the photovoltaic jigsaw. Because let's face it, otherwise it's just an interesting roof tile. Next time it rains, water will get in there, it'll start corroding. So for it to remain functional at any level, it has to be waterproofed. And varnish is the best I can think of. Okay, now normally I would uh, dilute the varnish with a little bit of turpentine, but for some reason this time I think I'm gonna go with a full strength mix. So let's see how we go. Now my big theory is that the varnish is going to soak its way into the cracks between the glass and waterproof the panel. And in theory, it will be thin enough 
and transparent enough to allow the ultraviolet and the infrared and the white light to all go through. And what I should wind up with is a transparent solar panel that in about two years I have to attack with sandpaper and remove the ultraviolet degraded varnish because by that stage I do expect it to become a bit degraded. However, this is not going to be in service continually. My plan is to have this solar panel sitting in a box in the shed so that when I want to resuscitate a battery I have a solar panel available without having to use the power of power on something that may or may not work because sometimes second hand, solar, uh, second hand batteries are actually beyond resuscitation. Kind of thankfully at the moment I've got a cloud in front of the sun so the panel's been able to cool down and I can spread the varnish better because I've got to admit when I first started putting the varnish on the panel was up at operating temperature around 50 degrees and the brush was nearly sticking to the panel and it will be interesting to see how much juice this puts out once it's got its little coat of varnish. We shall see what we shall see. 20 20.6, 20.7, 20.5, 20.4, 20.2, 19.5. Okay, the reason that gave an anomalously high reading is because a cloud had just moved away from in front of the sun and you get a little bit of refraction around the edge of the cloud whereas previously we had been looking at it under a clear blue sky but yet yeah, 20.4 is what it was up against 21.5 and it's now 20.7 so I can't say that painting a solar panel actually drops the voltage because it looks like it doesn't and there we go at uh, 2.4, 2.6 amps. So, yeah, essentially at the moment it looks like um, painting your crinkle cut solar panel doesn't actually lower its electrical output, but it's going to uh, waterproof the wiring. And so the take home message is that warbles on a lot. He's not actually as silly as he looks. Ciao.